Hey guys, welcome to another episode of It's All About the Music. Please like and subscribe for more videos all about rock and roll and all the music, all the music in the world. I am Chris Norwood. I'm on a journey to hear every song ever recorded, and I'm here to tell you guys about it and report on what I've come up with. Today's video is going to be a ranking the studio albums. I got some notes there about our Alien Ant Farm. But this video is about the Offspring. And the Offspring on my list here, they are coming in at a solid number 17 on my greatest musicians of all time. I like 83 songs out of their 118 studio tracks putting them at a really great 70.338%. They are a punk rock band that formed in 1984. Uh, they've got uh, several, they've got two non-album tracks that I really, really love. And they've got two albums that I'm not so crazy about. And we're gonna jump right into that right now with ranking the studio albums. I actually don't have, now I, even their worst songs, I still enjoy, but um, I am different than a lot of rock fans and that I typically, and you'll see this in my list, I usually prefer late era albums over older albums. I know a lot of people love you know, early Foo Fighters and early Green Day and early Offspring, but I'm not that guy, okay? I typically like the newer albums better. I don't necessarily like poppier albums, but I do like the pro better production value in an album from, say, 2012 compared to something from the mid-80s, right? And you're going to see that on my list. Uh, you're going to see that uh, big time. And uh, I know it's blasphemy, but you know what? This is punk rock, and all's fair in love and, and, and punk rock, right? Hip-hop, something like that. So... I don't have the physical copies of 1989's The Offspring, their self-titled debut, and um, for good reason. It's it's a good album. I, I bought the CD. I listened to it. It was okay. But it's coming in at my least favorite from The Offspring. I know you guys are gonna you guys are gonna hate me, but you know that's what this is about. Uh, me sharing my opinions because they're different than yours. Right. Uh, next up is Ignition. Okay, I'll, I'll show you the picture on this one. And uh, yeah, uh, this one is a really good one too. I, I really, I enjoyed it, but it's just not something that I needed sitting on my shelf. Um, my physical CD collection, I want it to be the best of the best. Um, there's some great songs on this early uh, album by The Offspring. Let's take a look. Uh, Session is good. Uh, Kick Him When He's Down, Dirty Magic, an early version of Dirty Magic. It'll show up later on another album. Um, LAPD is pretty good. Um, so, the, off, the uh, Ignition has some pretty good tracks, but you know, overall, not 100% rocking. Let's go back to, their, uh, to this one really quick. Because um, both of these albums are good. I, I will give it that. Ooh, there's a there's an alternative cover. I've never seen that. That's pretty interesting. So they had one single in July of 86. Wow. I wasn't even one yet. I was like six months old when that song came out. So, yeah. This album, The All Spring Self-Titled, uh, Jennifer Lost the War, um, Beheaded is good. I actually enjoyed the remix or the updated version of Beheaded. Um, or no, Tehran. Tehran, that's a good song. Uh, Black Ball, I'll Be Waiting. Um, all those are pretty good songs. So yeah, I'd say the self-titled and Ignition are pretty good albums, but just for me personally, um, I prefer the later era of the Allspring. And we're going to jump right into this right now. And I know you guys are going to keep on hating me because of my unpopular opinion. Feel free to trash talk in the opinion in the comments below uh, after you like and subscribe. Talk about how fat and bald and bearded I am uh, and how my tastes are bad. But this is coming in next. 
Uh, we're going. We're gonna count up to my favorite album, and this is good. Okay, this this is a really solid rock album. Um, but there's just some songs that you know are not my favorite. But Bad Habit, Gotta Get Away, Something to Believe in, Come Out and Play. You gotta flip this thing around. Self Esteem. It'll be a long time. Kill Boy Powerhead. What happened to you? Uh, this has a lot of great songs, but there's just uh, a couple on here out of the 14 that I am not in love with, right? Offspring, they're my 17th favorite band, but, you know, their first two albums and th this one, uh, just, you know, a few songs that are mediocre. They're not bad, they're just, you know, kind of mediocre. I, I, I'll we'll get to where I st really start to think the offspring are really doing something. Okay, this is my next one. Again, I like later era uh, bands, which is unusual for rock fans. Uh, but this is a really great one. Okay, I, like from here on out, everything is pretty pretty fantastic. Um, the meaning of life, me and my old lady, cool to hate. Uh, cool to hate is a highlight for me. Leave It Behind, Gone Away, I Choose. Uh, a lot of singles off this one. You get an intermission like uh, they are known to do in their albums. All I Want is a classic. Way Down the Line, Don't Pick It Up is one of my favorites. Amazed. Amazed is one of my favorite Offspring songs ever. So this is just, uh, even though it's way down on my list, you know, it's still better than their... Uh, earlier efforts in my opinion okay this is where things get crazy and this is where I really had a difficult time doing this um, this is probably this is definitely the hardest album rankings that I've had to do so far and I've, I've only done three or four for you guys but I gotta say I'm like after those four albums that we've already talked about I was so tempted, and I'm still tempted, to do a tie. I, I, I couldn't make up my mind, so I just had to go on gut feelings. I initially wanted Americana to come in at number one, but um, just I was going strictly by how many songs on each album I liked, and I, you know, I try to make that, that's how I do my list, and that's how I try to be fair, like objectively, the Offspring is my 17th favorite band, but their other four albums are near perfect. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, I hate to say this, I really don't know how to rank these, but I'm going to, I'm going to go on my gut instinct where I first pulled them off my shelf and this is what I came up with. Coming in next, this one right here. The Rise and Fall, Rage and Grace. Uh, kind of had a, um, a similar title to a Foo Fighters record, right? But uh, this thing is freaking fantastic. What a fun listen. You got Half Truism, Trust in You, You're Gonna Go Far Kid. This is in 2008 when not a lot of rock and roll was coming out. Uh, sort of, kind of now, it's sort of the beginning of the downfall fall of the rock genre, right? But this was killer. You're gonna go far, kid. Hammerhead, a lot like me. Takes me nowhere. Christy, are you doing okay? Um, some of these other ones kind of get a little bit uh, not as great, like Nothing Town and uh, Fix You and um, Let's Hear It from the Rock Bottom and Rise and Fall are good, but not stellar. Um, Stuff is messed up is classic. Uh, so this has a few weaker moments, but pretty much all 12 songs are at least good. There's really no, there's nothing mediocre on here. There's just a few that are good instead of great. But uh, yeah, overall, I uh, really love this one. Again, this was kind of tied for first place. This is unbelievable to have a band so good that they have four records tied for my favorite. Okay, the next one coming up, and this one is the one that really, really stumped me. Americana. 
I was initially when I pulled out all their CDs, I just wanted to put this one first, just instantly, because in 1998, that is when I first started listening. Uh, probably 96, 97, I started listening to my own rock and roll instead of my parents. And this is one of the earlier bands that I discovered. Uh, my parents enjoyed their funny lyrics. I enjoyed their music and their funny lyrics. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, I, uh, I can almost remember getting this as a gift. And wow, it was amazing. Like this and Green Day's Nimrod, um, Sheryl Crow's self-titled album. Uh, one of my earlier uh, additions to my CD collection. And this thing really rocked my world in 98. And here it is 12 years later, and it's still rocking my world. Um, how come this CD is scratched into a billion zillion pieces? Pretty cool album art, right? Um, how come these CDs from the 90s hold up better than the ones that I buy today? Absolutely love this artwork. This is some of the coolest most edgy stuff that I had ever seen in my life. Uh, really just kind of the stuff that made me a rock and roll fan right here. The, uh, the, the cool images with each song. Just, just my introduction to The Offspring and it really immediately hooked me. Um, with the, uh, you know, they have the intro that they are known, the intros and the intermissions that they're known for. You got Have You Ever, Staring at the Sun, Pretty Fly for a White Guy, The Kids Are All Right, Feelings, She's Got Issues, Walla Walla, The End of the Line, No Breaks, Why Don't You Get a Job. Now, the only thing that holds this album back, in my opinion, is the title track, which I was not a fan of, and Pay the Man, which I'm also not a fan of. Um, they're okay. They're okay, but they're not my style, not my kind of music. And, um, you know, I've given them a shot, and uh, that's the only thing. This is, this is my introduction to The Offspring, and it's, it's just an amazing punk rock record from 1998. Um, just such fond memories of getting that, of listening to it, of sharing it with my parents. My parents liked it. I mean, who doesn't like the offspring, you know? Um, now we're getting into my top two. This is my second favorite offspring record. Again, it's sort of in a, at a tie with Americana and Rise and Fall, Rage and Grace. Um, but this one's got some really cool memories to go with it, too. Um, and this is 2012's Days Go By. The uh, so far, you know, um, this is their latest album. I am uh, System of a Down and Offspring are making me upset. I don't know. Now I do know that the Offspring are having some issues with their uh, bass player. I believe um, he left the group, similar to Slipknot situation. Um, he left the group on bad terms and is suing for uh, extra money. Um, now, you know, I'm not going to criticize them for that because, you know, people get upset. And, you know, it's easy to do when you think about these people making millions and millions and millions and tens of millions of dollars. And they're complaining about not getting paid properly. But you know what? If they deserve it, they deserve it, right? If, if you did the work to get $40 million and you only got... 20 million or whatever the situation is, you know, yeah, you should you should try your best to get what you were owed. Um, but again, I don't know the situation with the offspring. Not sure what happened. I do know that it was similar to Slipknot, where a member was uh, suing the band. You know, sort of around the same time they got kicked out, and uh, they want more money. So. But yeah, this is the uh, the last, the latest uh, album by Offspring so far, Days Go By. Um, and I love this one. Absolutely love this one. Another darn near perfect record, in my opinion. 
The Future Is Now kicks things off with a lot of punk rock energy, Secrets from the Underground. This just sounds, it doesn't even sound like pop punk. This is just punk rock at its best, in my opinion. Um, the title track, Days Go By, is amazing. Turning Into You, I really enjoy uh, Dexter Holland's lyrical, um, lyrical gymnastics on that one. Uh, Hurting is one, uh, really gets me in the feels. Uh, a lot of emotion and uh, heart-pumping adrenaline in this album. Uh, Cruising California, Bumping in My Trunk. Kind of a goofy, joke, jokey song, but it gives me memories of one of my, one of my best vacations where uh, one of my best friends invited me to go to the beach with them for a few days. And um, yeah, I remember blasting this one on, my, on the way to his house. Uh, we didn't blast it there, but it, it just makes me think of the beach, makes me think of fun times with friends. Uh, one of my few social ventures, but I love the artwork on this thing too. Really, really beautiful. You get the you get the old man, you get the kid, and you know it makes you think. You got the cool uh, removable parental advisory sticker, right? Love that artwork. Love the artwork. A really beautiful album. Um, yeah, there's the guy. They're standing up in there. Uh, but yeah, one of one of my favorite, one of my favorite Offspring records. So if you if you sort of gave up on them before 2012, highly recommend it. I'm not sure how many copies it sold, but uh, pretty fantastic from Columbia Records. Uh, 2012 Offspring, Days Go By, check it out. All right? Are you guys ready? for my number one offspring album of all time YMCA am I recording? I'm record I know I'm recording I know I didn't touch the camera so the best album the best offspring hey buddy best offspring album in my opinion and again it's basically a tie what are you doing? What are you doing, you you mongrel? Anyway, he's gonna lick my feet while I finish this video. I'll give him a pet. Okay, number one Offspring album. Can you guys guess what it is? We've done their earlier works. We've done, we're just gonna jump right in. It is Splinter. That's right, 2003's uh, Venture by the Band. This really cool artwork. That's part of why I love it so much. The uh, the flower where the exploding head was. Um, just a lot of fun. There's the actual exploding of the head. Let's see what's under the CD. You get what looks like Dexter Holland howling at the moon. Is that him? That's not him. That's some random guy. I don't know. I don't know. That could be one of the offspring. It's someone's offspring howling at the moon. Or it's a computer-generated image. I just love everything about this this album art, and we'll look at we'll look at the liner notes too. Love the liner notes. Okay, you got a really really amazing artwork in here. Really really digging it. You got that guy howling at the moon again. All songs written by the Offspring, so they don't even break it down who wrote what. That could be the problem with uh former bassist. We'll have to wait and see. Really, oh, that is beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Still has a good smell. You got a candle in the wind. Never burn away the footsteps when the rain sets in. There's that guy again, howling at the moon. And your footsteps will always fall in. I don't, I don't even remember this. That's really awesome. Is that the guy again? Oh, he's running. He's running away in a field. And you got background vocals by Jim Lindbergh, <gasps> Jack Grisham, Dexter Noodles, and Higgins. Crowd vocals. Huh, oh, that's from a crowd. The 2002 Reading Festival. DJ scratching. You got trumpets saxophone, trombone, bells, 
Piano Background Vocals by Lauren Kincaid. Strings by orchestrated by Susanna Katayama. Got a concert, violins, cello, harp, guitar tech, guitar effects programming. Jim Lindbergh, isn't that that's the lead singer from um from Pennywise. I did not know that. I'm gonna have to take a look at the the these details on here a little bit more. I'm gonna have to jump on the Splinter Wikipedia. But yeah, uh, this is the greatest offspring album of all time. 2003 Splinters. You guys didn't Splinter. You guys didn't know that, did you? I bet that's not your favorite. I bet your favorite's Americana or one of those uh, pre-fame albums, right? Well, guess what? I'm cooler than you. My opinion's better. I'm just kidding. It's a uh, you know, it's an opinion. It's my opinion. So this one's got uh, opens with Neocon, which apparently has uh, crowd vocals. So you might, if you were, if you saw the Offspring in 2002, your vocals are on here, unless you just stood there in the crowd like this. Oh, I'm tough man. Don't sing. Arg. So the noose. The noose is calling, and all my friends are losing. The noose is calling, and enemies are rising. The truth appalling, and maker comes a calling. The appalling, and enemies are rising. Really energetic. This album just kicks off with a bang, just like days go by. Um, it's probably why I like those so much. There's no, well, this one has an intro, but it's just really exciting and just kicks thing off with a fever. Long way home. Oh, Lord, I face a long way home. I can't. I mean, Dexter, his vocals are extremely hard to sing with. He's he's got just a real powerful voice. Um, hit that! I know you want to hit that. Hit that! Everybody's getting with. I say consequences are a lot, but hey, that's the way it. That's the way things go. Oh, 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 oh. Well, why not take a chance? Everything's a game. Running a, a race against myself is another good one. I can't get my head around you was a single. I don't think it got that much attention. I know it didn't get as much attention as Hit That got with the strange animated video, um, which is pretty good for an animated video. Um, the Worst Hangover Ever is one of my favorite Offspring songs. Um, really funny, really really good musically as well. Um, Never Gonna Find Me is one of the great serious cuts in the album. Um, Lightning Rod is another great one. Spare Me the Details is a, and a hilarious acoustic song. Definitely a highlight on here. Dahooey is an extra punk rock extravaganza about um, Hawaiian surfers and how you should not mess with them. Don't mess with Dahui. Don't mess with Dahui because Dahui will mess with you. Don't with Dahui. Don't F with Dahui. Don't F with Dahui. Because Dahui will F with you. You guys like that? Oh man, I should I should become the offspring since they're never gonna put out an album again. Come on guys, it's been like it's been eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Why? I mean I could understand four. Like you know, most bands today, in today's modern rock world climate. Uh, bands take between one and four or five years between albums. That's pretty normal. I'd say three is a, is a good average. You know, you release an album 2010, and then maybe in 2013, you're at least getting ready to put something out again. The Allspring, 2012, then nothing. And I know that they're active. I know they release covers and soundtrack songs and videos. Coming for You was a good one with the clowns. But um, why? What? what's going on? They, they need to get a new bass player and they need to get things rolling. Because eight years. It's going to be a decade in between 
Days Go By and their new album, A Decade. It's going to be like System of a Down, where they're just not going to have one um, if they keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Or it's not going to be good if they take, you know, 10 years off. Uh, they need to do something soon. I would have really liked to get... Now, I, I, I was about to say I would have liked to get some quarantine stuff from them to keep us entertained. And they did Hello Kitty, which, which was great. If you can still find Hello Kitty by The Offspring, find it. It's, it's amazing. But yeah, this, this is The Offspring album you need to own right here. Uh, let's get... Now, it doesn't end with a banger, which sort of annoyed me. Um, I just never really got the humor of When You're In Prison. Uh, that was kind of, a, kind of a let down album closer for me. But uh, yeah, The Offspring, they are my 17th favorite band. Um, let me see y'all really quick. We're going to go, we're going to take a look at my list again. Uh, but that's been ranking the albums with, I almost said Living By Words. The Offspring, Living By Words are, uh, oh, they're, they're, Living By Words is 19. Offspring is 17. But yeah, I like 83 out of 118 songs. 70.338%. They're punk rock. Uh, they got two albums I'm not crazy about. And they are a band that I buy. At least I did. I, I got rid of their two earlier albums, but I I will buy any future Offspring albums. They're one of those bands that are locked in. I will buy their new album if and when it comes out. I will buy a physical copy if that's available. And uh, because I love Offspring that much. The Offspring, Offspring, um, just a great punk rock band. Um, you know, as you, like a Green Day, Plus 44, Transplants, Flogging Molly, Against Me, Blink-182, um, Boxcar Racer, The Offspring, Weezer. Um, you can see just all in my top 20 is just punk rock, punk rock, punk rock. Um, now, there, you know, there's other artists mixed in there, but Good Charlotte, Sex Pistols, um, Pinhead Gunpowder, Alkaline Trio, Eve Six, Bad Religion, The Clash. Um, I'm, I'm really into punk rock, guys. We're going to go ahead and list off some of my other favorite. Ramones come in at 44. The Distillers. So anyway, Sum 41, I won't go through every punk rock band that I like because there's hundreds. But that's been my ranking the Offspring albums, and I'm going to do a little bit different. Um, so, boom, you had that one. It was good. Yeah, that one. It was even better. And you had this one. Uh, then you had... All four of these darn near tied for first place, but there could only be one. So you had this one, love it, love it, love it. My kind of rock album. Then you had this one, that's what got me into the Offspring. It's one of my earlier pop punk uh, purchases. And then Days Go By, you know, final album so far. And then Splinter. So you guys, uh, you know, put in the comments which uh, what album you like the best. If you hate my list, let me know. Uh, if you love my list, let me know. And uh, keep on listening to music. I am a music fanatic. Listen to just music, music, music all the time. Uh, I really, that's part of the reason I'm doing this channel. Part of the reason I'm doing these videos. I want to be... You know, dream job for me right at this moment. Now, I'm a jack of all trades. I have so many hobbies. But I'd love to be like a, a music historian. And just sit around and talk about music all day. That's what I want to do. And I want, I want to entertain you guys while I do it. Um, I also make my own music. Uh, I got Living By Words. Uh, Chris Norwood's solo. Um... I got some other things. I got uh, Young In Ambitious was a side project that I did. I actually talked with another guy uh, 
actually is doing some uh, brainstorming on forming a real uh, multi-person band at some point. Um, if you guys want to make a song with me over the internet, we can do that. Um, whatever you guys want me to do, I'm a YouTube uh, go-getter. So whatever videos you guys want, if you guys want me to start wearing more clothes in my video, um, I usually don't dress like this. I usually, like especially because I work, I work all the time. So I'm usually golf shirts and khakis or blue jeans. I look kind of like a dork most of the time. Um, but you know, I love Converse. I wish I could wear Converse to work, but uh, that just does not feel good. Concrete and Converse do not mix. It's not punk rock at all, the way that it makes your feet feel. So this has been uh, Ranking the Studio Albums by The Offspring. And I hope that uh, you guys go listen to The Offspring, listen to Elton John, listen to Kenrick Lamar, listen to uh, Lil Wayne, listen to some jazz, listen to the classical, uh, listen to some bugs in your yards doing the Kincadia thing, uh, listening to my, listen to my band, Listening to some local South Carolina bands called uh, Trauma Slave, Thermostat, uh, Islander. Uh, listen to some burping. Listen to some anti music. Listen to some noise rock. Listen to anti music. Um, just listen to music um, because I feel like it's one of those things uh, where everybody likes music. Everybody likes some kind of music right now most people don't make videos about it and they don't just think about it and write about it and dream about it like I do they don't care as much as I do okay but everybody listens to music you know it's just it's everywhere it's in advertising it's just it's it's everywhere um, I've only met one person in my life and it, it, it I really had to think long and hard about it I was talking about music and this co-worker and a friend of mine, he said, you know, Chris, I, I don't particularly care for music. And I thought he was talking about a certain kind of music. Nope. He said he doesn't care for music. And he just doesn't listen to it unless it's playing at a store or something. That disturbed me. I don't know. I don't know. Now... He is a preacher, and he does have other jobs, and he is a preacher, but that just, he doesn't like music. He just, ugh. How? I, you don't like any kind of music? That's weird. But yeah, other than him, everybody likes music, right? So please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, we're getting some serious uh, activity on here, and I got, I got videos coming out. I've got days where I've got three or four videos coming out. I've got days where I've got 50, 60 videos coming out. I, I'm trying to get a schedule going, but I'm just going nuts filming these videos. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm just filming videos all the time. So uh, go check out my channel. I got some really funny stuff on there. I got um, some films that me and my dad made when I was a kid, we, uh, like movies. Not just like family movies. I've got some family movies too. Um, I've got animal videos. I've got poetry videos. I've got music videos. I'm going to do some metal detecting videos. Um, I'm going to do some, some reviews. I'm going to do some product reviews, some music reviews, maybe some movie reviews. I got headphone reviews. I could do some clothing videos. I'm not really into clothing, but um, whatever you guys want. I'm your YouTube. Uh, I'm your YouTube entertainer. I'm here to entertain you. So if this is entertain you, uh, just you know, just put it in the comments that I suck, and I'll try to stop sucking. Okay. So please like and subscribe. I've got four subscribers. Thanks. Have a good one, guys.